all landowners can contribute to healthy and functional watersheds, no matter the size of their property. Join us as we visit five local backyard conservation champions eager to showcase their stewardship projects. Helen's triangular backyard in Summerstown is flanked by two drains. Even though she requires open space for her work as a dog trainer, she has chosen to retain and significantly reinforce a healthy riparian buffer by planting hundreds of trees. Riparian buffers can play a significant role to protect water quality and increase resilience to flooding and erosion. I'm here today with uh, Helen Musso, who is going to give us a bit of a tour of her property and some of the projects that uh, she's been working on since moving here and through the Backyard Conservation Project. So tell me a little bit about this property. So this property is five acres and it has a pond and I got it initially because I have dogs. Okay. I train dogs in field. I partnered up with the Conservation Authority to, grow, to buy some trees, get some trees. How many trees did you plant since moving here, do you know? Well, I would probably venture to guess at least 600, if not 700. Oh my goodness. Yes. So tell me about some of the trees that you've planted here. I think we've got a white spruce here, and uh, is that a butternut by any chance? It yeah. is, actually. And so, again, I've tried to diversify in the tree selection, so that it's deciduous trees as well as fir trees, because then it attracts different types of wildlife. And it's, of course, so nice to see a nice, healthy, strong, mature riparian buffer along the water course here and yes. you know the fact that you've planted these small trees that are coming up. So what kind of advice would you have for people who maybe are just getting started based on the experiences that you've had? I would say just go for it. I took advantage of your program. I went in the spring and I went and got a bunch of little trees and I thought well i just start a line here and see one little patch and see how it goes. And then I was encouraged by that when I saw that things were growing. Trying different methods too, like sometimes I'll leave more grass around the roots of a tree to keep it protected, as opposed to completely burying it down to the ground. You've planted a large amount of trees, so obviously a, a lot of them are, are doing well and, and will get to maturity. A friend of mine was laughing at me. I'm going, well, I wonder when I can get maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, you know, like the Summerstown Forest is nearby, yep. and then you've got the road and the fields. It's nice to see like this habitat corridor in a way between the different forested areas that you've created yep. here. When people come to visit, what are their impressions when they see, you know, that your area is not just completely mowed lawn everywhere, that you've got a nice balance between nature and what you're hoping to do with raising dogs. It takes a bit of dedication to do all of this stuff. Uh, sometimes it's easier to mow, uh, but I think when I start talking about why I'm doing it, they understand, and especially when they're here and they actually see. You know, if they're here visiting and they see a heron, a blue heron land on the, the pond, they go, oh wow, right? So it's kind of uh, it's an experience for them as well. This is what I think that we should have more of. Helen, thank you so much for welcoming us today. And yeah, congratulations on, uh, you know, very successful stewardship projects. And uh, as the years go by, it'll be great to see all these new trees mature and grow and keep providing habitat for our wildlife and providing a bunch of other ecosystem services. So thank you again. Thank you.